Thank you for joining me in this video about Skyrim with Requiem. And the concept for this series is extremely simple. I want to kill Alduin and beat the main quest as fast as possible. The inspiration for this is kind of spurred by the last character I played, which was an illusionist, where I found I had become kind of overleveled and very powerful, but didn't have any real way to advance through the main quest line. And I thought it might be interesting to try and go the opposite direction instead and just see how quickly, in terms of hours played, that I can get through the main quest and defeat Alduin. And I think that'll be an interesting motivation and give some interesting strategy as to what kind of quests I want to do and how, in general, to play the character. But I'll put a few caveats here at the start. And the structure of the video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the run right now, go over the build I plan to use, and then we'll jump into some gameplay footage about Bleak Falls Barrow, because I'm going to do that just right off the bat to uh, get off to a fast start. But starting with the caveats, this is not truly a speed run, because most speed runs, the goal is to skip over parts of the main quest and stuff, use glitches if possible to make the game faster. I'm not going to be doing that. I want to complete all of the quests in a straight up way. And I know there are some very fast Skyrim speedruns out there. This obviously won't compare to that. The other caveat is I'm not all that concerned about how many deaths I take because I will be under leveled for a significant part of this. And I'm going to be pretty aggressive as I edit through it because I want to keep as much content and flow of gameplay because I do want to show all the locations that I go to as I try to gather the necessary gear and skill levels in order to tackle the end game quest line. So I want to be able to show all of that, but also keep the videos moving at a decent pace. Um, so I'll be keeping a running log of how many deaths I take in each zone, so you can uh, hopefully get a little bit of a chuckle out of some of them, which I expect will be rather difficult. Um, but I won't be showing all those unless there's uh, some particularly amusing ones. If you have strong feedback about whether you like or dislike that, that style of editing or how I intend to do it, please do leave me some comments with your opinion on that. Anyway, with that being said about how I sort of plan to do this run, and I'll go a little bit more into the strategy and the structure of it at a later time, but the character I'm playing, I started off, I decided to do it as an Imperial. The big reason is the starting stats. You get a huge chunk of extra stamina, which makes the early game quite a bit easier. There's also the boost to stamina regen while running, which makes it a lot easier to get around. So I think it'll take me less time to just go between areas. While I am allowing myself fast travel, just as a matter of convenience, um, there is still a lot of just traversing from one area to another, and I think uh, the advantage of being able to sprint places is pretty big from playing Imperial. And they get nice stat bonuses to the main skills that I intend to use, which are one-handed, and my big damage dealer is just going to be Destruction Magic. So really straightforward, a Spellblade style of gameplay. I plan to invest in a little bit in one-handed, a lot in Destruction, and then just other support magic from uh, some uh, restoration, a little bit of alteration and conjuration to make going through this a little bit easier. Uh, and one of the big reasons that I chose this particular style with the main offense being destruction magic is I don't intend to do any crafting on this character. Well, for one, I think it'll be an interesting challenge. And for two, uh, crafting just takes an extremely large amount of time just like gathering the ingredients and then grinding up the skills sufficiently so that you can improve your gear that is kind of time consuming so i'm not going to do any crafting whatsoever destruction obviously does not rely particularly upon having good gear and i think by just mostly wearing robes i'll be fine um and i maybe i'll put a couple points into evasion but i don't really intend to wear armor i'm just going to rely on my ability to dodge attacks and hopefully uh some cleverness <laughs> as i'm doing trying to dodge around these archers here without getting plugged by arrows um so hopefully that will be sufficient defense but that's more or less the structure of the build i'll, I'll go into that in a little bit more depth uh, as we get to the relevant parts, because using found items only is kind of 
interesting and challenging because, well, some of the stuff that I'd really like to find, like for example, getting a ring of destruction that reduced my spell costs would be a really great find. But there's not guaranteed locations of where to get stuff like that a lot of the time. Unless, for example, I wanted to go through the Dark Brotherhood quest line far enough to get the Nightweaver's Band. But there's kind of a trade-off of the time you spend to get particular gear versus how much faster that it makes the run. The other thing about doing a no-crafting run is potions are going to be a very dear resource. And gold is going to be quite a bit more scarce than it would be otherwise, too. And I want to be able to train up my skills pretty aggressively each time that I level. And so finding enough uh, items to sell without crafting anything I think will be kind of interesting and it may dictate some of my quest choices. So I think that will be kind of fun. That's about the end of Ember Shard Mine. And I do this little uh, cave for two main reasons. One is it's a nice way to gain about one level and just get a feel for how strong the build is. And for two, I need to gather up enough loot to sell so that I can take the carriage over to Winterhold and get some training in destruction because I really want to have that hit 25 before I go into Bleak Falls Barrow. It'll make that much, much easier. So by doing that, I'm able to get uh, some levels. And then I run back to Whiterun and I do this little quest for Carlotta just to gain her favor. And as an Imperial, I've got enough speech skill to just get this without a fight. The purpose of that is Carlotta has at her stall all the ingredients needed for some vegetable stew. And having food items is extremely powerful for the early game. It'll give me more magic or regeneration and make combat quite a bit simpler when I go on toward Bleak Falls Barrow. So it takes me a little bit of walking, but here I am at the location. And these outside bandits, there's not any great way I've found in order to approach them, and they do kill me a couple of times with arrows, which I'm conveniently editing out. Um, but that's why I'm hiding behind this pillar here, is there's two guys up on top of the rocks that have bows and crossbows. And I'm really hoping to pick up a crossbow at some point from one of these enemies, either inside or outside of Bleak Falls Barrow, because I haven't been able to get one yet. And that's going to make uh, fighting the spider inside of Bleak Falls Barrow a lot easier. So I'm taking advantage of my just very basic conjuration minion here to soak up some arrows for me. And it actually does, it doesn't have a very long duration, but it holds its own pretty well against these simple enemies. I get a little bit lucky that I'm not killed by the dude with the crossbow, uh, but unfortunately I destroy his crossbow when I uh, hit him with the sword. So I'm not able to pick up one just yet, but I'm just kind of grabbing whatever gear I can because I intend to sell everything that I uh, pick up and get a little bit more training on before I jump into the temple proper. So the skeleton runs up ahead, and I find that the bandit is already uh, pretty much out of the fight. But after doing this, um, I take a quick pause um, and go grab a level and then jump into the Bleak Falls Barrow proper. In this opening room, it is actually possible to run past both of the bandits. I have another video where I do Bleak Falls Barrow at level 1, where that's the strategy I use. Um, check that out, I did it a couple of months ago. But that strategy is a little bit unreliable, and also I do want to have a chance to try and loot these bandits, still in hopes of finding the crossbow. So. Uh, one of the nice advantages of getting just a couple of levels in destruction is I have access to runes, which are great, really useful, um, and make some of these earlier fights easier with the ability to set some traps for enemies. But now I'm, I notice that this bandit here has a crossbow and I don't want to die to it and take a silly death, so I'm just kind of ringing around this big column uh, waiting for my magicka to regenerate enough that I can cast a minion to distract them um, and then jump into the fight and hopefully preserve the crossbow so that I can loot it. And the skeleton does its job perfectly and I'm able to gather up a crossbow. This is a pretty well equipped bandit actually um, and I, I have been picking up lock picks from all of these even though I have no intention of ever putting a perk into lockpicking, uh, just because those items sell pretty well. 
Anyway, as hopefully everyone is familiar, you can pick up the silver katana off the back of that sarcophagus, and at this point in the game, it's just the best weapon I've found so far, and it probably will be for quite some time. So I dump my other stuff, take a quick nap, and proceed further into the barrow. And Requiem kind of reorganizes where a lot of the enemy mobs are, and I haven't played vanilla Skyrim in so long that I pretty much only remember the Requiem placement at this point. But up ahead here, I'd go into sneak mode because I don't want to aggro the bandit who's standing by the trap because he can hear you sometimes if you come up and are noisy. And I'd much rather uh, that bandit walk into the trap rather than me have to fight him because he's actually, I think, pretty high leveled. And there's a trigger up here. Just as you walk past these rocks, he will go forward and pull the lever. And then the hope is just that he's carrying something useful. And wait for it. <laughs> Having played through Bleak Falls Barrow many, many times, uh, I'm pretty quick with the uh, with the little puzzles. And the bandit doesn't have anything terribly exciting on him, but we can just push a little bit further forward as we go. And again, I'm just picking up um, books and soul gems and stuff because I want to sell as much loot as possible at the end of this and the Draugr are mostly just carrying junk but if I can find enough other stuff to sell that will help fund my training because I want to uh, keep my spells going up pretty quickly. And the skeleton just helps out in squishing some of the little baby spiders and I want to make sure I get rid of all of them so that I have a clear opening to eat a vegetable stew before I proceed further because it's going to be hard to find a spot where I'm not in combat where it's possible to eat food without um, being spotted by some enemy. So that's why I turn back around and kill this uh, little spider that was wandering off before I aggro the big one. And this, this part is pretty simple, pretty repetitive. The key is just don't get hit by the spit um, and I just yeah I keep jumping around the corner with the crossbow it takes about 10 or 15 bolts something like that uh, so I cut out about a minute and a half of that because I don't think anyone particularly cares to watch it this next section can be either extremely hard or extremely easy depending on how dedicated you feel about clearing it out. So after cutting down Arvel and recovering the Golden Claw, I just prepare for the mad dash <laughs> through the Draugr camp. And there's no particular reason to kill most of these guys. I suppose it would be nice to level up some skills, but they don't have any really good loot. I remember at the last second to dodge out of the way of the door. Uh, pretty close call, but I get through. And then after clearing this, since the Draugr all have to get up before they can start attacking you, uh, it's actually much, much safer to run through this area than it is to actually fight anything. And I'm not really in danger of getting hit at any point as I go through this, and I'd rather conserve my limited stock of potions and my mental focus <laughs> for the pretty dense uh, Draugr fight that's in the next section. The only two that actually do matter about getting rid of are the two at the very end of the level because they can follow you through into the next zone within Requiem so we just get a little bit of a sample of fighting some of these guys and this first Draugr I run into is actually a pretty high level one. I think it is possible for other types of enemies to spawn here like in the past I've heard people have gotten trolls and stuff like that although doing it at low levels that hasn't happened to me. But anyway, just remembering to keep good spacing, and this is really the payoff for having some destruction magic here, is the cost reduction from the extra perk makes it pretty easy to sustain. And I'm sure most people are already aware, but you do get a little bit more damage out of your fire spells by using them in uh, pulse mode, uh, like just firing for a second at a time instead of holding down the button all the time. Uh, you get a little bit more damage per your mana by doing it that way. 
and for stuff like this it actually does help. So I just take a second, fix my hotkeys, and then clear out this next guy, and then we'll be on to the real part of this dungeon, the area in the boss room. For other people who might have an interest in doing Bleak Falls Barrow at a low level, here's a tip. Don't even bother bringing a shield in. I carry a torch because it's really nice to be able to do bash attacks, but you really don't want to get into the idea of blocking these big swings from the Draugr, because until you've got quite a few block perks, it'll drain your stamina extremely quickly, and then, well, there are a lot of Draugr, and they do a lot of damage, and your shield is not going to keep up. So the more important thing is just to get a sense of the timing on those attacks so that you can be spacing out of range of them. And that just is a matter of some experience and <laughs> taking a lot of deaths as you learn it. But this next area, well, I'm sure anyone who has played through it in Requiem knows it can be kind of punishing. It is possible to drag nearly all the enemies back to these swinging blades, but that's extremely uh, time consuming. But it does help, especially when these early enemies are kind of high level, to drag at least a few of them back through that doorway. And I get a little bit unlucky and get disarmed by the shout from that Draugr who woke up. And then I get even more unlucky when he manages to get through the swinging blades. And again, getting some payoff for having destruction because without uh, a weapon otherwise I would have been in pretty big trouble. But I do manage to get a sort of cold from him, which is a kind of a nice find. It'll make some of the later fights uh, against when I want to do like random bandit camps or things like that. The Sword of Ice is a really good find for there. And then I spend a few seconds looking around to find where my katana ended up. And then we're back on the road again. And if possible, it's nice to be able to leave the oil traps that appear in this room in place because being able to drag a crowd of Draugr back into the flames, it won't kill them outright, but it does help soften them up a little bit, and it makes this later room somewhat more manageable because it is just a necessity that we'll end up retreating back pretty often because uh, our damage output versus their hit points is <laughs> not a great comparison. And here we come to the marathon section of the dungeon. And I'll put timestamps in there if you feel like skipping ahead just to see the ending fight. But I'll also talk a little bit about uh, spacing against Draugr attacks and uh, how to melee them effectively at low level. Although it's nice here that I do have some supplements with runes and my fire magic to make it it makes it quite a bit faster compared to just doing it with melee. And while Draugr are in theory weak to fire, they don't appear to take an excessively large amount of damage from it. But having runes, at this point that's pretty much the only area of effect type spell that's available um, until I get quite a bit higher level in destruction, so I try to use runes wherever possible. and. The shouts at long range are kind of hard to dodge, but they also don't do that much damage. But there's an example of why it's not so great to be trying to block these attacks, because um, without shield perks, uh, a lot of it still comes through. And here I'm hoping that I could have set off the the fire underneath these guys, but it, it just it just doesn't happen. I don't get in quite the right place at the right time. And I've got, th I think, three Draugr down in this lower area with me, at least one of them being an archer. So it's a little bit tricky um, to avoid getting cornered. And it's very, very fast to die against these ones. That you, can, you can tell they're a bit higher level because of the armor. And the... One-handed ones are a good deal faster in their attacks, or the ones that are carrying just a one-handed weapon and no shield, their attacks come out quite a bit faster and they're a little bit less predictable. So you have to play a little bit more defensively than you would against the 
um, more garden variety <laughs> draugr. So I just kind of lure it around this area. Uh, arrow runs right by my face and that kind of reminds me I don't want to be standing out in the open zone. And here I'm just waiting for my magic to recharge a little bit. And one of the big reasons for doing the College of Winter hold before this is to be able to pick up the Novice Robes of Destruction. You can get plain Novice Robes in Helgen, just off the Battle Mage there, but having some cost reduction on your Destruction spells makes a big difference. And after clearing those guys, I'm able to grab a level up and my plan at this point is to just dump everything I can into Magicka to make my spells more effective. And I want to have just a little bit of perks into one-handed so that my stamina uh, sustains a little bit more quickly. It also, uh, by reducing the weight penalty of equipped weapons, it makes spells marginally less costly to use when you've got a weapon in one hand and a spell in the other. Now going back up into here, my goal is to use ranged attacks to draw down enemies in just little clumps at a time because as we saw there with three of them at once, um, they, the fight starts to become complicated because you can't see all of, them at, all of them at the same time. And so while the crossbow doesn't really do any damage, even though I, I had a few silver bolts coming into this that I just randomly was able to pick up, Still doesn't really do any damage, but it does let me draw down enemies in more manageable groups. And the shield bash is with the torches great against Draugr, although you have to hit them just a little bit before they start their swing. And especially against two-handed guys like this, getting your timing just a little bit off means that, well, best case scenario is you're able to recover and block in time. Uh, worst case scenario is their attack goes through and just kills you instantly. <laughs> um, and in that case, it eroded my stamina pretty heavily and cost me one of my very precious stamina potions. And for whatever reason, it's quite a bit harder to find stamina potions as drops. I mean, they're easy when you're doing crafting. Since I'm not doing crafting, I'm trying to hoard the stamina potions as much as I can. It's also a good reason to rely on spells a little bit more than melee, uh, because at the very least, Magicka can regenerate a little bit more quickly, I think, than Stamina does. And it's ideal when the archers come down and put away their bows, because um, not wearing any real armor means that I'm extremely vulnerable to long distance shots. I take at least one death in here just from a random arrow from a Draugr, which it's so random, I suppose, that I don't particularly feel bad about it. Um, like, you, you can play around the archers pretty effectively, but uh, sometimes a guy you can just barely see will kill you. Um, and in this particular playthrough anyway, that's not something that bothers me greatly. And something to be aware of with the two-handers is when you're trying to space them out, if they do a sideways slash, the Draugr can recover and swing back the other direction if you try to go in for a hit. Their downward slashing attacks don't have a second follow-up. Um, I'm not sure which of them does more damage, but it's worth knowing that if you're intending to fight them in melee and can't be affording to take any hits. And now I've just kind of got my routine down here is go wake up a Draugr with a crossbow bolt and then drag it down these stairs so that I can fight it without having to worry about an archer coming along and making my life more difficult. And this is obviously a high level one based on how little damage that my rune did. But just being able to see kind of where the wind up for the attacks is coming and back up in time 
makes it pretty manageable. And when they shout, you can either run toward them to get out of the path of it or off to the side and often dodge most of the damage from that. And while these medium level Draugr shouts are not terribly dangerous, um, it's especially effective if it's something like a disarm or a force shout that would otherwise um, be a big inconvenience. And I can see in the distance that it's mostly just archers that are still left there, which are a little bit slower to drag down. But I found a pretty good location by the side of this pillar where I can have some cover from arrows while, with any luck, uh, dragging down enemies to me in manageable groups. And I start to be a little bit more, uh, like as I'm, I'm doing this commentary after the fact, if you haven't already guessed, but I start editing out some clumps because the fights do get kind of repetitive. It's just lay down a trap and then retreat. And this is a, a special case because one of the Draugr back there, you can just kind of see it a little bit, is it's, it's got a frost spell in one hand. And I think there's just one of those in the throne room, but it's absolutely deadly if you're low level, because at this point I don't have any elemental resistance at all. And that Frost Draugr will drain my stamina and kill me extremely fast. And I, I know this from experience playing other characters, and I don't feel like learning that lesson again. So I back up pretty far, and I make use of the oil traps and uh, runes to try and burst this guy down without getting close to him because melee against a frost dragger is just um, near certain death until you've got some cold resist to work with. But I'm able to take him down pretty smoothly, doesn't manage to kill me, and I just reset back up to my spot here where I've got a nice location for a trap, and at this point I think I've run out of ammunition on my crossbow so I just dump it out of my inventory and start relying more on my destruction spells to drag enemies down to me. And the skeleton actually puts up a pretty good showing. Um, it's able to do reasonably good damage. And normally I like the wolf summon a little bit better because it moves faster than the skeleton does, but um, I kind of got it by accident, but it ends up being kind of a good choice as I go through here. and just keep taking advantage of this nice bit of positioning that I've got as I try and drag down these last handful of archer enemies. And it's pretty easy to get overconfident at that point and try and get up too close, but the archers are still extremely deadly. So uh, it's possible to just wait for them to run out of arrows and that works fine. Or they tend to get impatient if you kind of go into and out of range with them. Uh, sometimes it'll trigger them to go into melee space with you. And I'm pretty sure that's the last of the low-level Draugr to worry about. All that's left is the, well, <laughs> one more, and then the boss. 
and I'm feeling pretty bold here, so I go for the bash to interrupt his attack, and it works out fine, and I'm able to clear through him pretty quickly. And I do a wait command here so that I can get my stamina up before going into this final fight. And it ends up actually being, um, well, a little bit easier than I would have expected, actually. And I know this guy is a disarm shout, so I unequip my weapon for a second so that it's not in my hands when I get hit by that. That way I don't have to go looking around for my katana again. And after fighting a bunch of other Draugr who have the same moves, this guy is basically the same except he does more damage, but of course the goal is just to, uh, yeah, don't get hit. And he drops me a pretty nice uh, War Axe of Cold and the quest item. All that's left is to loot the two chests that are in this section, which give me some pretty mediocre items. But that's it for Bleak Falls Barrow. Thank you for watching this far. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this new series. I'm, I'm kind of excited to try it out because I've never gone after the game with the goal of completing the main quest line as quickly as possible. If you find this interesting, leave me a comment with any suggestions as to what you'd like to see next. Um, but I've got a couple of other videos planned, and if you're enjoying them, uh, do hit subscribe and check back in as this series continues.